my recording I stopped. Just as the kids of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things that enter in, chokes that word and doesn't allow it to become fruitful. Okay, so that's what those don't represent the kids of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things. That doesn't allow a man to be able to truly flourish in his truth and grow into um, the spiritual individual that he can be. And to become a dumb fruit, he doesn't bear fruit. Okay? Let me look at this word, kids. Strong G3308. Merimna. 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 And it says, um, care anxiety. <clears throat> care anxiety. That's all it really says. It really says. See, look. Care through the idea of distraction. Selected to care. So it says care through the idea of distraction. See? When you care for something, you place a certain importance on it. And when you place a certain importance on something, things that are actually more important, you um the other things that are less thing when you place a certain care upon a certain um sense of importance upon something, things that are actually important you cast it to the wayside. In other words, you don't really pay much attention to it. And the other thing you place the care on causes the thing that's actually important to become a distraction. Whatever it may be, whether it be a woman, whether it be a job, whether it be just being looked at as someone to be accepted in this world, you know? As a matter of fact, I got the word care right here. Care definition. I'm gonna go right to the main part. What's his verb? Feel concern or interest attach importance to something. See, serious attention or consideration applied to doing something correctly or to avoid damage or risk. So it's a serious attention or consideration. But a serious attention or consideration to what? Things that choke the world, the deceitfulness of riches, the kids of this world, and so on and so forth. Let's go back. This is Peter, first Peter four and four. It says, I'm gonna go right to the point. I'm starting verse um, in fact, verse three. First Peter 4 and 3, for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine. Look at the word lasciviousness. Seven sixty six, as El Gaya, as El Gaya, as El Gaya, unbridled lust, excess, licentiousness, lasciviousness, wantonness, outrageousness, shamelessness, insolence. So it's like so lasciviousness is like an unbridled lust, an uncontrollable lust. Okay, which don't necessarily got to be sexual. It could be something that you lust for in any way. That's uncontrollable. So it says. When you walk in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banqueting. Look at the word banquetings. Strong's G, 4224. Patas. 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 Drinking, carousing. A drinking bout or carousal, banqueting. It's like revelry. There's no one will get to that. So it says, um, when we walked in lust, when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, reveling, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that you were not with them, to the same sex excess of riot, speaking evil of you. They look at, they look at you as being strange because you don't run to the you don't run to the same excess of riot. They do. They look at you strange because you're not indulging in the same, um worldly pleasures that they're indulging in. Okay? And that's all because why? 
you're not one that sold seed among thorns. And those are example people that that are actually um that actually represent the seed that sold among thorns. Thorns. Those are part of the cares of this world that they engage in. And that's when you go to verse two. It says um, I saw in verse one, First Peter four and one, for as much then as Yahweh shall suffer for us in the flesh, arm himself likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of the Most High. And living to the lust of his men, lust of men, and living in the ways of this world, you know. You want to be somebody in the world. You want to go into the NBA. You know, I think I should go back to school and things like that. That's the kids of this world, man. That's foolishness. You know what I'm saying? That's foolishness. Because this world ain't going to be here for long. You know? America's about to be destroyed. And Yahweh Shah is coming back to set up his kingdom. Romans 13, 11. And knowing that, knowing, and, know, and that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake our sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we believe. So our salvation is nearer than we thought. And this was like 2,000 years ago when the Apostle Paul said this. So if our, so if our salvation was nearer than we believe 2,000 years ago, the Apostle Paul was saying we're close. So what's wrong with saying we're close in this day and age? If Paul was saying that 2,000 years ago, we're still here. We are close. It's nearer than we, be than we believe. Okay? we at the doors right now. We got a real hard time. Strong's G fifty six ten, Hora, Hora, Hora. A certain definite time or season, fixed by natural law and return with the revolving year. Um, so it's any definite time, point of time, moment. So now it's hard time that we got to sleep. Or well, now it's that definite time, that point of time, or that moment when we wake out of sleep. We are in that season. We should wake out of sleep. Why? Because our salvation is there and we would leave. So we're in that season. We're in that time when your house is making its return. So you got to wake out of that sleep. Wake out of that slumber. We got out of that ignorant mind state, which ignorant means to lack knowledge. Okay? You got to wake up out of that. <laughs> you know? You know, we're in the flesh, so. Satan go try to tempt you with certain types of desires and things of that nature. You gotta fight it, you know. You gotta fight it, and it helps through prayer, through fasting, staying in the scriptures, you know. Um. Ah. Uh, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the work of, God, of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly in the day, as in the day, that's the point I want to get to. Not in riding and drunkenness. Riding is simple, riding is like clubbing, partying, living it up. As a matter of fact, it's good that we're riding right here. It goes into Bacchus. It says, um,. Strong's G twenty nine seventy, Comas, 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 a nocturnal, which is nighttime, and riotous procession of half drunken and frolicsome and fellows, who after the, after supper parade through the streets with torches and music in honor of Bacchus or some other deity. As a matter of fact, that's a spur because right now it's five thirty seven in the morning, Tuesday, and yesterday was Labor Day, and the day before that was um was a on, was a Sunday. And, and on Sunday before Labor Day, they got this thing called Juve. People are on the streets dancing and all of that madness. Because I was outside on my way to my, my grandmother's house. And I was on my way to my grandma's crib. And I was taking a, I was taking a bus, but the bus was taking extra long for some reason. So I just walked. And my grandma lived um, far from where I was coming from. So I'm walking through crowds of individuals walking down the street, half drunk. People staring at you and shit. People smoking weed. You know what I'm saying? Women walking around just like sluts out here in these streets, man. You know what I'm saying? People walking around with their different bandanas and they had St. Vincent bandanas in Barbados and Jamaica and Trinidad and so on and so forth. 
and you're doing exactly what the scripture is saying. And sing and play before houses of male and female friends. They're playing music. Hence, you generally of feast and drinking parties that are protracted 